projects that penciled when they were developed and sent into the city for approval aren't penciling now. They're losers. They're losing money. Hey, hey, it's Kevin Namal, Pine Financial Group, where we work together so you succeed. You found us here on Facebook, you found us here on YouTube. Do me a favor, hit like, hit subscribe. We're trying to build a channel so we can help more real estate investors just like you. Today, I want to talk about a event that I went to. I want to summarize real fast a little four-hour real estate investor event that I went to yesterday. It was put on by the Colorado Real Estate Journal. It's the Multifamily Development and Investment Conference. It's pretty crazy. A couple hundred people in the room for a, a pretty short conference. And it had one speaker at the beginning of the day, then the rest of them were panels. And because of where we're at in the economy and in the market. I was very curious to go and see what are these investors and brokers and attorneys and how do they see the market? How do they see what's coming and how is it going to impact specifically multifamily? Now, a lot of what they talked about in this event was on a national scale, but there's also some very focus to Colorado because heck, it's the Colorado Real Estate Journal that I went to. So bear with me here for our more national viewers. This might be a little bit more specific to Colorado. I did write a little bit of notes here. So you'll see me look down at these notes. So the first was the apartment market review. The president of apartment appraisers gave the presentation tons of statistics. It was actually quite difficult to keep up with him because he was just going so fast and there was so much content there. But what I pulled out of it was three things. First, the inclusionary housing ordinance, which this is more specific to Colorado. But what this states is that if you're going to develop or build more than 10 units in one building, you're going to have to create so many number of affordable units. So low price to sell, low price to rent, one of the two. And it's going to be based on the size of the building. So it's definitely going to have some restrictions on new development of apartments in the city of Denver. And we're going to talk more about that because this actually came up on a few of the other panels as well. And he thinks that there is a pipeline right now of 30,000 units to be delivered per year for the next four or five years. So we're looking at over 100,000 units in the pipeline, but without exception, nobody thinks we're going to get anywhere close to that, even though it's believed that Denver could absorb that. This is a national issue here. We have labor shortages. We have supply chain issues. Projects that penciled when they were developed and sent into the city for approval aren't penciling now. They're losers. They're losing money. So all of these projects that looked great and the del got delayed in the city are coming out and they no longer are profitable. So we'll see how many projects actually get developed. But he did say multiple times, look, we're in a housing crisis. This is all across the country. We need housing. Inventory remains super, super low. Then we went on to the next panel, which was a broker panel. So this was four different individuals, all real estate brokers working in the multifamily space of the panel. It was about 50-50. In fact, I think it was exactly 50-50 buy or sell. So, or I'm not, sorry, not buy or sell, hold or sell. All four of them said buy. Now they're brokers, right? So they have an incentive for you to be doing transactions. So it kind of makes sense that they would say that, but I did find it interesting that only two of the four said, get rid of your projects, keep them right now. They're not seeing any cap rate pressure in urban core areas. This is nationally which surprised me significantly because with the rising interest rates, typically you'd have to see cap rates go up in order for it to make sense financially. So if you're aiming for a certain IRR or a cash on cash return and you're paying more for your debt, you would think that you have to pay less for the property to make that make sense. The lower price of a commercial property, the higher the cap rate. So typically higher interest rates, higher cap rates. But in the urban core, they're not seeing any cap rate pressure at this time. Banks will continue to tighten guidelines. They will continue to get more expensive as interest rates continue to, to rise. It's going to start costing more to get your bank financing. So they all said, start exploring alternative financing hard money lenders like what we do, for example. But if you're going to try to save money, insurance companies, hedge funds, that kind of thing. 
So that's what I got from the broker panel. After that, we went to the construction panel. Everyone on here was either in design or construction of new properties. The overwhelming theme was space usage. We want to see more and more flex space, more community space. So everybody's building that, not necessarily pools and barbecues, but workspace is, is a big thing right now. So if you can fill a little pockets of your apartment unit with common area workspace. They're seeing a demand for that and they're able to charge higher rents on their units for those types of amenities. Supply chain issues is a big, big deal, but supply chain is becoming more predictable. So although you might be waiting a year and they use the elevator example several times, but if you're waiting a year for an elevator to come in, at least you know it's a year. A year ago, you would have no idea when that elevator was coming in. So now it's a little bit easier for developers and builders to plan their project. So it's not getting faster necessarily. It's just getting more predictable. Labor shortage continues. We knew that. Modular building might be the wave of the future. They were pretty hot on this. So you can control the environment. You can control the labor. You can control the material in a lot of ways. And so what we're seeing is lots of different modular buildings getting pieced together to build the apartments. I thought that was very interesting because we are seeing that quite a bit in the residential space right now. As long as the modular is placed on a permanent foundation, it just seems like there's a good way to build properties for a little bit cheaper than the stick built stuff. So they're seeing the same exact thing in the multifamily world. The suggestions was, um, a lot of people are building to rent instead of building to sell multifamily because it's more profitable and you better have a plan B for your materials. So if you got carpet, for example, and this price on your selection shoots to the roof, have a plan B laminate or tile or whatever it is so that you could stay within your budget. So plan B on materials. After the construction panel, they went into an investor panel, which is actually my favorite. Five different investors. These are like large. They're putting out you know, 900 to a billion dollars a year, one of them said. So this is not your small mom and pop type thing, but us mom and pop operators can look at this and learn from it. So I really enjoyed this panel. Building is cheaper than buying right now. So almost exclusively they're building their projects, locating land and building on it. All core, inner core type projects. So you're, you know, the closer to the inner ring of the city is best or the total opposite and go complete value add. Nobody's looking at 70s, 80s built properties if they're priced anywhere close to replacement cost. Everyone said you better be buying it well below replacement cost or you're going to lose money on those. Rents will continue to go up. Here's the first time that the housing ordinance in Denver came up. With the limited building of multifamilies in the city of Denver because of this ordinance, without exception, every panelist and speaker at this event think rent is going to go up. So as the city tries to help with a affordability problem, which I know we have, they're forcing investors to build smaller units or not build in the city at all. So that lack of inventory is going to hurt rent pricing. One thing that, that they did say at the very beginning that I forgot to mention here is you could avoid building affordable housing, but the fees to get out of that requirement are almost the same price as just building the unit anyway. So it's a very extensive fee. So it's almost like there is no other option. You have to build the affordable units. And, you know, investors and developers are here to make profit. So if you're going to strip their profit out of them, they're not going to do the deal. Um, I know for some weird reason, cities have trouble understanding that. They're still buying all of them. Everybody on the investor says, buy, buy, buy. It's a great hedge to inflation. One said they're buying and selling. So they're still willing to sell. But almost everybody without exception was buy and hold. Finally, I had to leave a little bit early, but I did see the beginning of a development panel. And there's two things I got out of that before I had to get out of the room. First was it's better to build to rent. Same thing as our construction panel said. And finally, real estate is a fantastic place to be. It typically does pretty well in high inflation times. And we know rents are going up, so this is a good hedge to inflation. Now, even if you're just buying little single-family homes, that's going to hold true. Even if we see a little recession here, a little dip in pricing over time, this is a fantastic hedge to inflation. So that's the notes that I got from the Colorado Real Estate Journal Multifamily Development Investment Conference. Hopefully you got something out of this. You didn't have to go spend four hours at a hot room. I told you pretty much what they said. 
I'd love it if you'd hit like, hit subscribe, and you could check us out at pinefinancialgroup.com.